Well, happy Sabbath, everyone. Uh, welcome to this study, this morning's study. Um, before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? The dear, gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for all the things that you have been doing in bringing a message to us that has brought conviction and power to our lives. And we ask for your continued presence of your Holy Spirit, that we can be united with Christ and with each other as we study together. We ask that you can guide and direct our minds, guide and direct this study. And we pray that you can comfort each person in the trials and difficulties they face. Um, we ask, Lord, that we can have a clear mind in understanding uh, the mathematics uh, that we look at when we look at the symbolic use of numbers, and that we can put these things to our remembrance. Thank you for this time to review these truths, and may we be able to share them with others. And we pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, happy Sabbath again. Now, last Sabbath, we looked at um, this period of time uh, between um, well, it was between uh, the um, October 22nd, 1844, and the time in which the, the church was organized, right? And so that was a period of 18 years and seven months. Now, we, we also looked at um, uh, 911 months. And what was that about? Did anybody remember? Does anybody remember what 911 months, why we studied 911 months? Was it not 9,100, sorry, 9,110 or something months? So the Sunday is like symbolized 911. Okay. Yeah. So it was like 911 times 10. Okay. Um, so the, so this was counting from, uh, let me see. I'm trying to remember myself. From May 14th, 1948, with the attack, um, 911 months from the founding of the state of Israel. So that was April 14th. So we were looking at this. This was not somebody who's in this movement. It's somebody who's just regular Protestant, as far as I could tell. But the significance of a line 911 months, what, what did you say it was? Yeah. So, yeah, it goes from the founding of the state of Israel to the attack, Hamas, October, that's right. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so as you say, someone, I just, I just sort of saw someone had observed this. Mm -hmm. um, so it has that 9-11 symbolism. So their idea was there was something there within that that was kind of like planned on that date. Yeah, so um, the thing that they had noticed is that it was like they were going to April 23rd for some reason. They didn't were going to the attack on Israel. And and they had 75 years, 11 months, and nine days, or 911 months and nine days, right? Well, sorry, yes, that wasn't the, that's, yeah. Right. Wasn't. So, so then I said, well, why didn't they notice just the 911 months to the attack by Iran on Israel? And, and then the question about that, so we have these symbols, now, we don't, of course, take any weight on what's happening with modern Israel as far as a fulfillment of prophecy. But they do become a symbol, correct? That modern Israel, any history, can still become a symbol of something. Well, yeah, well, 9 11, you could, uh, people have connected Mossad to what was going on there. Uh, so mm -hmm. that's, yeah, as yeah. symbols. Mm -hmm. Right. But we, we don't look for is modern Israel to be fulfilling the Bible's Bible prophecy, right? We don't look, you know, like, you know, the Seven Days War, there's these different things um, as, you know, that we can connect with 25, 20 years to history of ancient Israel as, as the primary fulfillment of some kind of prophecy. But what happens in the state of Israel can be symbolic of something, right? We, we would agree with that. Okay. Now, um, there was something else about that, which I don't remember. So anyway, I, I just those are the things we studied last time. So we were looking at these symbols. Now, the 18 years and seven months was really interesting. 
that that that's the 19 years that we have that we mark. Uh, we can mark 18 years in seven months, which is not 19 years completely, but you know we're not marking from October 22nd, 1844 to October 22nd, 1863. We're counting to when the church is formed. Now we we could try to look to some event on October 22nd, but anyway. I, I just wanted to review that, just what we had studied. Now, there are other symbols that, that we have uh, that we haven't spent as much time looking into in in this particular study. We've looked into them, obviously. Uh, but the other one is uh, the 273. And, and so this is a review of the symbolic use of numbers. Now, does anybody know when the number 273 came into the movement? As a symbol. I think it was uh, Tess that uh, introduced that. Yeah, so Tess is going to introduce that in what year? Uh, 2018. Okay, so it's in, in 2018 we get the symbol of 273. Now, how much of that study was hers and how much was Parminder's? I don't know, but I do believe that Parminder uh, had something to do with that study of the 273. So, you know, I've tried to figure this out uh, exactly the date. I don't have the exact date that we we understood this, but uh, we know that it was introduced by Tess as a symbol. Now, it came through a study of Acts 27. We did an in-depth study of Acts 27 after July 18th and, and learned a lot, but it's also in Numbers 3. So it's Acts 27, Numbers 3, which is 273, which is kind of interesting. Now, in Acts 27, uh, where does she get the idea of the 273 from, that it represents the Levites? Oh, you have uh, from the 276 on the ship. Okay, so we have 276 on the ship. And we've talked about this before. Ellen White says, how many are on the ship? Well, in one quote, she says 300. Yeah, 300, right? So she rounds it up to 300. And so we have 276. And then we also have uh, that there are three. That is, you're going to have Aristarchus, Paul, and Luke, who are representing, well, Paul's representing, I don't know who's Paul's representing. What, what does Paul represent? Well, are, are not the three representing the priests? Yeah, so the, so the three are representing the priests. But you have Paul, you have Aristarchus representing Christ and Luke the Holy Spirit is what she said. But but just, just the idea that there's three and then there's 273 remaining. And so the 273 become a symbol for the Levites. Now, we, we had this discussion before. Did she... Did she initially look at Numbers chapter 3 to get the 273? Or did she just start with Acts 27? Do you know? Like, did she have a number for the Levites already from Numbers chapter 3 and then looked at Acts 27 and recognized that if she took 3 off the 276, there would be 273? Or did she start with with just Acts chapter 27. Does anybody know the answer to that question? There was a, another study that we found that had been done several, I think, years before by okay. some of the evangelical ministry that had connected the 273 from Numbers 3 to the 273 in, in Acts uh, 27. Okay. So somebody else had done it before, have, yeah. but not in this movement. Yeah, so she could have read that and then just incorporated that into her message, but we don't know. Okay, so you're saying she did read that, or you don't know if she read that? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, so we don't know. So we don't know the origin, whether it was something she discovered on her own, whether Parminder discovered it, and where he discovered it from. You know, if you look on the on the internet uh, to try to see, you know, if other people have discovered this. You obviously will see that it's it's noticed in the Bible that they have to redeem the 273. Uh, but whether you're going to connect that with Acts 27, that I don't think is common. 
So obviously people know about the number for the Levites. So, so I think it's important to understand uh, this, this symbol and why we use it. Now it's, oh, I hate when my computer does this. I'm staying up. I'm doing this here. So i stop the share just because I got to do this other thing and that interferes. Yeah. I don't see that there's, I don't, I don't easily find it that people make that connection. Obviously numbers chapter three, they do. So, I mean, I didn't spend much time lately looking at it because I was kind of hemming and hawing what I wanted to look at today. So, um, but when we deal with numbers chapter three, we have this, we, what we do is we take the number of the the child the children of the Levites, right? That is the males who are more than a month old, and they're going to count that for each of the three tribes of the Levites, right? So they're going to total this up. So when they do that, they're going to have um, the number. So they're going to have uh, the number of the firstborn of the 12 tribes. So the first you have the firstborn of the 12 tribes. That's the firstborn, and that's who's going to be redeemed. So the Levites are going to replace the firstborn. And there's 22,273. Now, if we total up the number of the firstborn, or not the firstborn, but of all the Levite males a month old and upward, we, we actually don't get 22,000. What number do we get? Is it uh, 22,300? Yeah, because you're going to have 7,500 of, of the Gershonites, 8,600 of the Kohathites, and 6,200 of the sons of Moriah, and, and that's going to be 22,300 and not simply 22,000. So, so there's 300 that are not counted when they do the math. So they, so they give you 22,300. But they don't say 22,300, they say 22,000. And so there's theories about well, why is 300 not included? Now, they're not going to be counted in the redemption money. And we know that that 300 relates to you know, Gideon's 300. We also can relate it to Ellen White saying how many are on the ship um, in Acts 27, saying it's 300. So 300 becomes uh, this symbol. And then we're going to have the math, so there's going to be 22,700. So I'm going to just look at this here. Um, yeah, we were, we were talking about the number 223 recently. Yeah, 223. Yeah. It's like a Soros cycle. Yeah, so that's going to be the Soros cycle. That's the cycle uh, of the number of months in um, its how many days? Uh, just yeah, remember. I think it was like, yeah, was it something like 8,000 or something? And Yeah, so it's uh, 223 times. Yeah, so it's going to be, yeah, 65,000 or 6,585 days. And that that was relating to the July or to the, because if you divide that, um, that's going to be, what was that? Uh, it's 18 years and seven months, something like that, right? So if you if you divide that by 365.25, it's going to be no, it's not 18 years and seven months. What is that one? It's uh, 18 lunar years and seven lunar months. Ah, that's it, right? 18 lunar years and seven lunar months. So this is the thing I was trying to remember. <laughs> Thanks. So. So here we have a symbol, this Sora cycle, that's 18 years and seven months. And on the Islamic calendar, it's 18 years and seven months. So obviously the 18 year and seven months is longer if it's 18 solar years and seven months on our calendar, right? It's longer. Thank, but thank the Sora you. cycle is 18 years and seven months. Okay, what's that, Stephen? It was like 202 days more. Yeah, 202 days more. Yeah, I think that's what we came up with. And you know, I was trying to remember what it was. So thanks. So, so the 223 ties us to that. Now, so we have to keep a lot of these things in our minds, that these things are related. 
So the 22,300 relates to the 223. It relates to the Sora cycle. And that's just the cycle of the lunar cycle, the lunar cycle that repeats, um, usually related to uh, eclipses. And then is, in Islamic calendar, it's 18 years and seven months. But we also have 18 years and seven months, not on the Islamic calendar, but on our calendar between October 22nd, 1844, and May 21st, 1863, right? So it, it's kind of remarkable that these, that these symbols exist and tie together things in our movement. It's remarkable that is we need to, to mark it. You need to pay attention to it. Um, but it's the fact that God does these things shouldn't surprise us. And so when we look at this 273, so we, we have this symbol of, of the 273 and we relate it to the Levites. We've related it to a message to the Levites. Now, so I'm just going to sort of finish this off. So what we do is we have, it says, uh, the, all the firstborn males, that's, uh, numbers 343. And of course, 343 is an important number because what is 343? Seven cubed. Yeah. So it's seven cubed, right? Seven times seven times seven. So in numbers 343, it's going to give us this number and all the firstborn males of the number of the names from a month old and upward. Now notice we have a month there as a symbol. Of those that were numbered of them were 22,203 score and 13. So we have 22,000 and three score, which is 60 and 13. That, that added together is 73. So, so 273. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, take the Levites instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel and the cattle of the Levites instead of their cattle. And the Levites shall be mine. I am the Lord. For those that are redeemed of the 200, three score and 13 of the firstborn of the children of Israel, which are more than the Levites. Now, it doesn't actually give us uh, the number 22,300 directly. It, it just says that there is, you know, if you added them up, you would get that. And so some people think it's a typographical error or something like that, but I, I don't believe so. But you're going to have the 22, uh, uh, the, you know, the 22,273, uh, and they need to be redeemed. And thou shalt take five shekels apiece by the pole after the shekel of the sanctuary shalt thou take them. And here is where it tells us that a shekel is 20 geras, right? So when we look at the writing on the wall in Daniel chapter 5, and, and we count up the number of shekels and we get, you know, 126 um, that are symbol by, symbolized by meaning, meaning, take or you farsen. Uh, and then we multiply it by 20 and we get 2520. It's this verse that we use, right? And, and this is important in that it ties the 2520 to this verse. Right. So this is a verse that we have looked at when studying the 2520, but it's also relating to a message to the Levites. And so we take these symbols and we say, well, this is representing a message to the Levites. And that message is uh, connected to the 2520. Now, what about the five shekels apiece? What's the symbol there? So what's the symbol of five? Five wise, five foolish. Yeah, so normally we use it as the five wise, five foolish, right? Okay. Um, now, it's interesting in the Hebrew here, um, if you look at the Hebrew numbers, notice that you have 2568, 2568, 8255. So that, that word, uh, five, is there twice. Now, now, why is that? It's not an easy question for the average person to ask to answer it's easy to ask so so why is it like that what do, what does the doubling mean here so i'm just going to look at it in hebrew here so it's just going to have that word right here kamisha kamisha 
it's actually kamishot in, in the way that it's spelled here, kamish, kamishit. Kamashit, probably. It doesn't have the vowels, so I can't tell exactly how it's pronounced. So they, they have it doubled. So what does that signify? The doubling, right? So not so much the Hebrew. We know that's an intensification generally in Hebrew. But what does the doubling mean? The second angel. Okay, so it's the second angel's message. So, um, so why the second angel's message? Why is it connected here to the Levites? And to the five shekels. Yeah. So it's five shekels ahead. Shekel of the sanctuary. I'm just looking at the Hebrew here. And 20 years. Shekel. Now, I really wish, you know, the word for five was 2569 or 2570. Because um, that would relate to the week of Christ. Because um, it's 2569 days. Cardinal count from the start of the week of Christ to the end, but this is 2568. So, you know, I don't, you know, I don't know if I can make much of that. So, um, so we have this doubling. Now, now in Hebrew, it's generally an intensification, right? So it's just like a superlative, like, but it, it, I'm not certain here because other places they don't double the number five when they mean five. Uh, but we know it is five because the math is going to be done for us, right? Um, I think it's going to say here, yeah. So um, in verse 50, and of the firstborn of the children of Israel, he took the money, a thousand three hundred and three score and five shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. So it tells us what 273 times five is, right? So 273 times 5 equals 1,365. Now, we know that there are 12 tribes, right? But how many tribes are here in this equation? 13. Yeah, so there's actually 13 tribes, right? Because the Levites aren't one of the 12 tribes. And if you take... 1365 and you divide it by 13, you're going to get 105, right? And 105 is a symbol of the 10th day of the fifth month. And then if you multiply that by 12, you get 1260. So in a sense, 1260 is represented here. I don't know if that's too many steps for people, but you have the 273, you're going to multiply it by five. If you divide it by 13 and then multiply it by 12, you get 1260. So is, is that seem like a fair calculation that 1260 is represented symbolically in the 1365? Does that make sense to people? So we're saying that there's going to be this redemption money and this redemption money is going to be paid to who? Who's going to pay the money to who? The 12 tribes to the Levites. Or to the sons of Aaron? The sons of Aaron. Yeah, it's going to be to the sons of Aaron, right, in verse 51. And Moses gave the money of them that were redeemed unto Aaron and to his sons, according to the word of the Lord, as the Lord commanded. So that means the, 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 what I understand, and I've always been confused about this, but the tribes themselves are going to pay the redemption money to Aaron and his sons. Now, why would they do that? What What is, why is that happening? So the Levites are going to replace the firstborn of the children of Israel. And so for, for the difference between them, so they're going to exchange them, right? Right, so there's an exchange of 22,000 for 22,273 that, that are more, right, that is, the children of Israel have 273 more, and they're then going to pay the money to Aaron and his sons. Does, does that make sense to people? Yeah, it does. Okay, I, I, it never made sense to me. <laughs> it seems to me you should pay the money the other way. Um, but maybe it, my brain just can't comprehend it. 
Because if there was, if they were equal number, nobody would pay any redemption money, right? Now, and, and if there were no children of Israel, you know, if they were less or let's, I don't know. I, I can't, I don't quite understand why they're paying it to Aaron and his sons. Seems to me the payment should go the other direction. Am I not understanding something correctly? Perhaps it just meant they were supposed to be, be giving support to the priesthood. Like those who, who are, who are rendering your, your spiritual things should be getting your finances or blessings of some sort. Except they have 273 more than, than the Levites. So it would seem like an overpayment, right? You understand what I'm saying? But, but that's how it's done. So for, because of this difference, so I'm not quite clear if I understand exactly what the redemption money is for. So to Moses took the redemption money of them that were over and above them that were redeemed of the Levites. So maybe there's not enough Levites to redeem. If there was the same number, the Levites wouldn't need to receive money. But because see, it doesn't make sense to me. That's, that's all I'm saying is it doesn't I don't understand it. I don't understand exactly what's going on. Yeah, I told her that. Seems yeah, I they know need that. to. Like, okay, go on, Samuel. Explain that. I feel that since the Levites are the ones who they are the ones who remained in the sanctuary and did no other works, so that's that 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 was the reason why they were paid that extra money, redemption money. It's my thought, just in my mind. Okay. So, okay. Well, do you agree with what Ron says, that they need to redeem the extra 273 with money instead of with men? So that means that the Levites are redeeming the firstborn of the children of Israel, but they already have 273 over. I still don't think I understand it. I don't understand the exchange, what it's doing. So I'm going to have to think about it more, but I've thought about it a lot and it's never made sense to me. It, it would seem that the, that the Levites would have to pay the rents, the redeemed money because there's 273 extra. So I still don't think I understand it. I'm sorry. I wish I could, but that's what's done. So, so the point is you have, uh, 12 tribes paying that money. So each of those tribes, is actually paying, um, uh, you know, it's not going to be equal, right? It's going to be 11, 13.75 per average per tribe um, to pay that redemption money. So I don't know. It, it, all I know is that we can do this math and we can create 1260 out of it. And I think that should make sense. Um, yeah. So Aaron and his sons, they're receiving 1360 five shekels. Yeah. And there's 20 gears in a shekel. Yeah. So that brings a total of 27,300 uh, gears. Yeah, yeah. 27,300. And that's simply just taking 273 times 10. Right, because we're just doing it times five. So if you if you double it, you're going to get two seven twenty seven thousand twenty seven hundred and thirty. Yeah. So they're giving this to Aaron and his sons. Now he had at that time two sons because his first two sons had uh, been destroyed by offering strange fire. So if they were going to receive. Um, the gear is equally. Each would receive ninety one nine thousand one hundred. So it's basically like three times ninety one hundred. So you have a three nine one there potentially is in the three three nine three times nine one. Okay. So he has how many sons? What he has two say? sons. Two sons at that time. Okay, and then and then so you're taking what the thirteen. 165. What are you doing with that? Well, into Geras, so times 20. Oh, oh, oh. okay, times and 20. Then, so dividing that by three. So it's three times 90, 9100. 
Okay, I see what, yeah, it's 9,100. So 25,300 divided by three is 9,100. And then from that, what do you get from the 91? Well, that's divided equally into the sums. Okay. So you have three, and and, and Aaron as well. So the three of them are receiving 9,100 each. If they were going to receive it equally. Yeah, we know 91 divided by 13 is 7 as well. So so there's a bunch of symbols connected with these numbers. Now, and I've made this comment before, a lot of times what um, skeptics do is they just say, well, all of these numbers are just imaginary, you know, not imaginary numbers in the sense of mathematic imaginary numbers, but just numbers that are made up meant to be symbolic, and that's why we can do these things with them. You know, and they say, well, you know, they're round numbers. Well, not all of them are round numbers, right? Um, obviously, 273 is not a round number. But this is just, these are the numbers that God gives us, and they are symbols. And I believe they're real numbers as well, that these are actually uh, the numbers that were counted, you know, just made up. But some people, because they're they're so powerful as symbols, they say, oh, it just must be made up which I don't think is a good argument. It's kind of a circular argument. But um, so anyway, that's that's what we have in Numbers chapter 3. We have the 273 and we have a 1260 that's represented. Now in Acts uh, chapter 27, so you got 27 and 3 again, right? And it's going to be in uh, so Acts 27. I'm just trying to... Where they got the number of the people on the ship. I think it's going to be later that they mention the number of people that survive. Yeah, so there's, right. yeah nobody's going to die on the ship, right? Um, and where is it? Around first 38. Um, yeah, 37. So 27, 37. And we were in all in the ship 203 score and 16 souls. Right, so that's going to be 276. And and so we just exclude Aristarchus, uh, Paul, and Luke, who's there, of course, because he's... And this is one of those sections where you can tell that Luke is actually personally there because of the types of details that he gives. But he's not uh, giving an account uh, that somebody told him. It's not a second-hand account. Um, but it also he includes himself there. And then they're going to have this uh, uh, measurement that's going to be done. And let me see if I can find it. Where's the measurement? The fathoms. Oh, yeah, that's in 28. Okay, so so they're going to talk about the Acts 27, 28, and sounded. So they're going to, it says, but when the 14th night was come, as we were driven up and down, in Adria about midnight, the shipmen deemed that they were drew near some country. So now if we have the 14th night, how many days has it been? So 13. 13 days. And how many uh, minutes in 13 days? 18,720. Right. So we, so we have July 18, 2020 represented here. Okay. And then it says, and they sounded and found 20 fathoms. Now, a fathom is 72 inches, right? And when they had gone further, they sounded again and found 15 fathoms. So we know we can take 20 times 72, and you're going to get 140, or the number of minutes in a day, right? So uh, 1,440, right? Which is uh, one hundredth of 144,000. And if you have 15 fathoms, that's times 72 inches. That's going to give you 1,080. And that's the number of divisions of the Hebrew hour, right? So, so one is a division of time dealing with the number of minutes in a day. And then the Hebrew hour is divided into parts. So 1,080. Uh, a part is uh, three and a third seconds. 
So that's because um, if you take the number of seconds in an hour and you divide it by um, 1080, you're going to get 3.3333, etc. So, uh, so that is, so you're going to have these two symbols. And if you add them together, uh, 1080 plus 1440, you're going to get 2520. Right? So I probably should have shown you what I was doing here. So let's just do this again. So you got, um, and we'll just do this here, 13 times the number of minutes in a day, 13 days is 18,720 minutes. And then we have 20 fathoms times 72 inches. That's going to be the number of minutes in a day, right? So if you multiply that by 13, you'd get that July 18, 2020 symbol. And then you have 15 fathoms times 72. And that's going to give you this, which is the number of parts in a Hebrew hour. In, in a Hebrew day, if you multiply that by 24 hours, you're going to get 25920. So that's the number of parts in a day. And if you take how long the Jews consider a month to be, that is their measurement of a month, is uh, 765432 plus one days, or one one parts, pardon me. So that's the number of parts. And if you divide that by 25920, uh, no, I did that wrong. What do I have to divide it by? I put 2520 there for some reason. <laughs> so 76542 plus one. So that's the number of parts. And then I have to divide it by 25, oh, I see, I just didn't hit that. 25920. And that's the length of a month. Um, that's the closest that they could get it. And, and it's actually in the time of Christ. That is about how long a month is. So presently a month is 29.530587. So you can see the difference there. Uh, it's, it's just a matter of a second or so. So that's pretty accurate. Um, and how they determine the length of a month. By calling it six five four three two plus one one parts, three two plus one parts, which a part is three and a third seconds, right? So another way to do this is you take seven six five four three two plus one, right? So that's how long a month is, the average month, and then you multiply this by three point seconds right and that's how many seconds a month is so if you divide that by 60 that would be how many minutes a month is and if you divide that by 24 no i have to divide i have to divide that by who i have to do divide it by 60 again is that what i do yeah that's the number of minutes so no, I did that wrong. So I take this divided by 60. I, I'm doing something wrong. I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. So that's the number of seconds in a month. So how would I do that? I would take the number of seconds and I would divide it by, divide it by 60, divided by 24. Oh, I'm multiplying it. So that's the number of hours. So I did something wrong. Anyway, I can't remember what I have to do. My mind's not working right now. But anyway, the point is um, we can see that there are these symbols in Acts 27. That they tie us to this message to the Levites is connected to the 2520, right? It's connected to time and it's connected to July 18th, 2020. Right. So it's it's connected to these these main part of our messages. Is there anything else uh, that we would note about 273 here just in Acts? And uh, so what, what about 276? Does that have any significance on its own?
Okay, so one other thing we should note, so I'm going to just look at some things that I have regarding 273 on my computer. This is, if you look in 1798, uh, you got February 15th and November 15th um, marked in 1798. I'm not going to go into the details, except to say that February 15th is 46 days from the start of the year. And November 15th is 46 days to the end of the year, right? Now that's uh, an exclusive count on the part of February 15th. In 1844, from Samuel Snow's letter, and I think November 15th is when he publishes, that's the republishment of the August 22nd, uh, The True Midnight Cry. I believe that's what that is. Or no. No, what is November 15th in 1844? I can't remember. But anyway, there's 273 days. You have 46 days on either side. And there's some significance that I don't remember. But November 15th is another symbol. But you can see that you in a year, when you have uh, 273 and 46 and 46. And let me see what other 273s show up. Um, not 273. So um, we know from October 19th, 2019 to July 18, 2020 is 273 days, whether that is significant or not. From March 27th, of course, to December 25th, 2021 is 273 days. And March 27th itself also represents 273. Okay. I, uh, yeah, okay, Stephen. I had done an analysis of the R in the parable of the workers in the vineyard. And okay. I have the, the third R, the sixth, ninth, and eleventh R's. Yeah. And third, if you add that, yeah. So if you add them and then add them squared, it takes you to the number 276. Okay. And so we can take that the number 276 represents the priests and the Levites in that labor of this final work on earth. Would that make sense as a symbol? 273 is the message to the Levites, and the three added to it is the priests giving that message to the Levites, and then they join in this work. So some join in earlier, some later. Does that make sense? Yeah, you could maybe draw some connection to it, yes. Now, we also found the 273. So I did the presentation on November 9th, 2019 on the 273 from uh, this diagram. I drew, drew out when I was at the School of the Prophets then. On, and Stephen was there, Odilio was there. And, and so that 273 goes from October 11th, 2019 to July 10th, 2020. And then there's 273 to April 9th. 2021, which is March 27th on the Julian calendar in 2021. And that July 10th uh, symbolizes uh, the 10th day of the seventh month. And I'm not going to go into this study, but that's just another place the 273 showed up as a symbol. Right. So we mo know it mostly because of March 27th and the 273 days, which all these charts are going to continue to show. Now, there is 273 weeks from the binding off camp meeting in 2016 uh, to January 1st, 2022. We noted that. And it's the 264th Sabbath since Rafi and Paneum opened up. So there's a lot of different connections that we had there. So we have all of these symbols, 273, right? There's the 273 days again. Uh, with the mind calendar date, right? So, and, and we also have like, um, if I go back from the first time I presented in this message, October 5th, 2012 to March 27th, 2020, which is the center of the March to March 27th in 2019 is 2,730 days, right? So lots of different symbols. So we have this symbol of message to the Levites, now, what do we do with the symbol? What is the symbol telling us? So uh, Iran makes a little note there. So you have put 
252 plus 252 months plus 273 days. So we know we have in the 777 structure, it's 252 plus 252 plus 273, right, with the different dates. And Iran just notes from his birth to July 18th is 252 plus 252 months plus 273 days, which is very interesting. But we, we have these symbols. So we have these symbols, 273, all these different symbols that we've addressed. What do these symbols mean? What are they for? And especially what does 273 mean? You say it means the message for the Levites, but well, what does that mean? I know that's kind of a broad question. We know it's Palmoni. He's giving us these numbers for a reason. And he's tying things together. But what, what is he tying together? Can we say he's tying together the past and the present? <coughs> yeah. Okay. So he yeah, uses he's these always, he's, always been, he's always been in control. Yeah. Okay. He's always in control and he's connecting. So like if we look at Numbers chapter three and Acts 27 and we say, well, what do they have in common? Like what, what is it that we are supposed to understand? Well, we're supposed to understand that there is a message and a work to do, right? Now, this movement, if we relate to what Dwight had shared in his study, um, this movement was supposed to continue to do a work. Instead, it lost its focus, right? And it decided not to do the work that it was given to do, Right. It didn't accomplish the work that it was given to do. Instead, it panicked, right? Acted emotionally, rashly. But God still showed that he was leading us. Yes, Stephen? You have a comment? Uh, I don't. Oh, okay. So we need to understand this symbol. Like that it's 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 a number that we can put and we can do all this math with, but the purpose of it is for us to see that we have work to do. And, and God is continually calling us to this work. Now, this work is not some big work. The first work is to do the little things that are before us. Right? So one is we study. We try to understand this message. We try to understand it so we can present it to others. And we practice presenting it to others. And we do what God puts in front of us each day. And that message is going to grow and develop. But we have to put the efforts into giving this message. We need to recognize this. And and God sometimes has to stir us up and put us in situations that we're not really comfortable with in order for us to develop and prepare a message and be prepared ourselves uh, to do that work. And so that's something that we really need to pray for at this time in this movement. We believe that, you know, the divorce is completed, uh, but we need to continue from there, right? So we've divorced from the strange wives, whole other story. Um, and, and now we have to move forward in this work of giving this message. So any, any final comments before I close with prayer? Excuse me. When, when did the divorce end in, in this movement? When did I come in? Or when did the movement begin? When did the divorce end from the strange wives or the strange doctrines end? Oh, when did the divorce, divorce end? Um, well, we're saying that 2024 marks the divorce. Date. So we have January 1st marked in our lines. And we have April April 10th marked in our lines. And that's the first day of the first month. January 1st, the first day of the first month. First day of the first month marks... Uh, the end of the divorce that starts on the first day of the 10th month. So, so we believe that we are in that time in which the divorce has occurred and it's been basically announced by Jeff that, that the movement is to have nothing to do with us. So that we, we are banned from the movement in a sense. They, they divorced us to some degree, right? So, so we're not a, to be a part of the movement. We're, they're not supposed to let us into their meetings or anything like that. So that's why I'm saying the divorce is completed. So we're just left. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Okay.
Okay. Let's, let's close with prayer. A dear Father in heaven, we are grateful for the Sabbath and the fellowship that we can have. And um, we are thankful for the light that has come from your word. And we know, Lord, that we have these symbols that represent a message and a work that needs to be accomplished. And Lord, we pray that you can guide and direct each of us individually in doing that work. We know that you're not calling for an organization after the order of man, but for each of us to be united with Christ so that we can cooperate truly with one another. We pray for each other. We pray for our friends, our family, people in this movement, uh, past and present, um, those that are making decisions. And uh, we pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit can work upon all of our hearts uh, to do what is right. Thank you for hearing our prayer and bring us together again to study your word. According to thy will, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.